Welcome back and I've got another fantastic experiment to show you today and one I've been meaning to show you for a very long time but I've been struggling to get to work properly. What we're going to look at is just how quickly gas particles move when they're diffusing. So I hope you all know a little bit about diffusion and what happens to cause diffusion when you get uh, one type of particle trying to move through a whole load of other particles. And what we wanted to look at today was just how quickly particles diffuse through each other. So are they moving very quickly or are they moving very slowly? Well, if you've watched diffusion, then you would probably think that the particles are moving very slowly because it takes ages for them to travel through another gas or a liquid. But what we're going to do today is we're going to take away the material they're diffusing through and see just how fast the gas particles are moving. So to do this, what I need is quite simple apparatus. I need a container uh, that is going to hold the coloured gas and I need to connect the two together and then I need a second container connected to it that's going to uh, pick up the gas that's diffused from the bottom container to the top one. The trouble is we can't see gases so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some iodine vapour in the bottom container. Now when I did this at school um, and I haven't seen the apparatus for years it was done in long tall things that look like sort of three quarter metre length test tubes and we used bromine and uh, bromine is just about a gas at room temperature but it's not very nice to work with. So um, I'm going to use iodine and I'm going to turn that iodine into iodine vapour so we've got it in a gaseous form and then we're going to see just how quickly it diffuses from the bottom container to the top one. So the bottom flask has got the iodine, the iodine vapour and air in it at normal atmospheric pressure and the top flask has just got air in it. They're connected together and I'm just going to open the clip on them and see how long it takes the iodine vapour to get into the top flask. So I think you'd agree that's pretty unimpressive. It will take hours and hours for the amount of iodine vapour in both the containers to equal out. It takes ages for the quite large um, iodine particles to diffuse all the way through the air that's in both containers. But I wonder what happens if we remove the air from the system and we use a vacuum in these containers instead. So what I'm going to do for this experiment is something slightly different. I'm going to take the same arrangement, but I'm going to put a vacuum in both of these. So I've got the vacuum pump here to evacuate them. The lower one will be full of iodine vapour and the upper one will just have the vacuum inside it. They'll be connected by the hose and there'll be a clamp in between the two. And what we'll do is undo the clamp and see what happens. But now for the fun experiment. The bottom flask got the iodine and iodine vapour in it and a vacuum and the top flask is also evacuated so there's no air in either. So let's open the clamp and see what happens. So I hope you noticed there that the iodine vapour moved into the top flask almost immediately. So this it's going to take some explaining. So that's much more like it. It appears that the iodine moves into the evacuated container from the lower one that's got a vacuum in it as well, almost instantly. So um, that's interesting. It's getting up there very quickly. And the explanation is not as difficult as you might think. 
if you think about it, in the first experiment, we had air in both. So the iodine gas was, or the vapour, was trying to move around inside the container, but was constantly colliding with molecules in the air, the nitrogen and oxygen. And those collisions weren't always in the upwards direction, sometimes sideways and sometimes back to where they came from. But how fast are they actually moving before collisions? Well, if you remove the air, if you think about it, an iodine vapour particle that happens to be moving upwards will have nothing in the way. It has what we call an infinite mean free path. Now, in the case of uh, this apparatus, the free path is the length of the apparatus. So, when I open the clamp that's between the two evacuated containers, the iodine vapour that happens to be moving upwards moves upwards into the, the upper container without colliding with anything at all, and that happens almost instantly. So what we'll do now is look at just how fast they're actually moving. So I don't want to get too technical in this video and do mathematics and things like that, but the speed that the iodine vapour particles are moving at is entirely governed by the temperature in the room. Uh, there's a formula 3 over 2 kT uh, which gives their average kinetic energy and in fact they're moving at hundreds of meters per second. So when I opened that clamp they were into the top container almost immediately. There was nothing to stop them moving. They were moving at maybe three, four hundred meters per second and so those that were going upwards go straight in to the upper container. So why is diffusion such a slow process? Well, of course, the particles that are trying to diffuse are moving at around 500 metres per second, but they're having so many collisions in the gas that they're in that their actual distance that they move every second is really very small indeed. So I do hope now you understand a little bit more about diffusion. That diffusion is a slow process, not because the particles that are diffusing are moving slowly, they're moving very fast at room temperature, but because they're having so many collisions on their way through the container that they're traveling through it very slowly indeed, having all these random collisions. But of course, if we remove the material that they're colliding with, then they can move completely freely and they can move at very, very high velocities from one side of the apparatus to the other. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. I can't tell you how long I've been playing with apparatus to show this to you as we don't have the long, tall test tubes anymore. And it's not really that safe working with bromine. So it seemed to work quite well. I hope you feel you understand a little bit more about diffusion now and why it appears to be a slow process at atmospheric pressure. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.